Check it out. Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I'm Wendy and I'm so happy you're here. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome, and I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below, as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. Today we're gonna be doing four Dollar Tree, no, what are we doing? Today we're gonna be doing four thrift store makeovers using Dollar Tree items for your farmhouse spring decor. If you like these projects, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think, and now, without further ado, Let's get started. So I have here a little collection of some items that I had planned to make over, but I only got to four of them. So I'm going to be making over this ivy topiary that my friend Lori was throwing out. And then from the Goodwill, I found these two wooden birdhouses. And I think I got these on two separate trips, but they were only $1.99 each. And they're pretty large, but they were also the perfect height to have as a set because one's shorter than the other. And then I have this globe that I think I got from Ross's years ago. And then I have this two-piece silver serving tray, also from the Goodwill, and that was only $2.99. And I really liked this because it came with the stand, and you usually don't find that at the Goodwill. And then the cake pan and vases, I didn't end up getting to this time, but I'll get to them one of these days. So we're first starting with the wooden birdhouses, and the first thing I'm gonna do is to get them all cleaned up and get the ickies off. And there was some moss hot glued to the smaller one, so I had to use my heat tool to kind of get that off along with my Cricut spatula. And then I'm going to use my Waverly White chalk paint and paint both of those completely white. And I didn't even sand these down, which is one of the good things about using chalk paint is it really will cover up pretty much anything. And then I'm going to go back in with my Waverly chalk paint in ink, which is really just black. And I'm just going to paint the inside of the little doorway on one. And then I just painted the whole hole, the whole hole. <laughs> black on the larger one because it didn't go all the way through but this way it just kind of looks like a hole. Then I'm going to take my Waverly Wax in Antique and then using a paintbrush I'm just going to paint that onto the roofs and then I'll take a paper towel and wipe it off so that I get it nice and light and it looks a lot like wood. So I'll do that on both of those roofs and then I'm going to go back in with my black chalk paint and a makeup sponge and just start distressing the edges and some areas on the front that I want to look like scratch marks or a distressed look so it goes with that farmhouse style. So then I printed out the words chirp and tweet from my silhouette studio using the font that I downloaded from defont.com called the skinny. And if you don't have a cutting machine, this is such an easy way to still get that Ray Dunn inspired look onto your projects. So all you have to do if your surface is a white or light color is rub a pencil onto the back side of your letters and then tape it down at the top so you can keep checking on it by lifting it up and replacing it back on the same place. And then you just trace right around those letters and then fill it in with a paint pen or even just a black Sharpie. Now, if you're working on a black surface or a darker color, you can still do this, but instead of using a pencil, you'll just use white chalk so it will show up on that dark background and then you can just fill it in with a white paint pen or in some cases a white colored pencil. Wait, that's an oxymoron, but you know what I mean. And I'll have this printable available in the description box below so you can just click the link and then print it out on your printer.
So now I'm gonna make a sweet little bow for both of my birdhouses. And so I'm using the fold over method and this gingham black and white 5 8 inch ribbon from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna make three loops on each side and then I'll fold it in half to get the center and just make teeny tiny little snips on each side. And then I'll take a chenille stem and then run that through there and then twist it on the back and then foof out my loops. And I'm gonna attach that with some hot glue onto the larger birdhouse. And then for the smaller one, I'm just gonna make a simple little bow, just tying it like you would a shoelace, and then cut my ends at an angle. And then I took some hot glue and just to give it some additional cuteness, I'm gonna hot glue it so that it's kind of wavy and looks like my tails are just flowing along the top of that roof line. And as a reminder of what we started with, here's a before picture. And here they are all finished and I think they are so super adorable and we only spent about $5 for the pair. And I think they're, I already said they are super adorable. Anyway, I think it's a sweet little addition to your spring or summer farmhouse decor. I love them and I hope you like them too. Today's video is in collaboration with five super talented ladies that I've gotten the pleasure to know through this YouTube journey. And first, let me introduce you to my new friend, Liana, who put this playlist together. Liana is from the UK, and not only does she make beautiful home decor, but I could listen to her sweet voice read from the phone book. It is so soothing and pretty. And then we have another sweetheart, Maria from Artsy Cupcake. She does a little bit of everything from room makeovers, paper crafting, Dollar Tree DIYs, and trash to treasures, high-end dupes, just everything adorable, she does it. Also joining us is Lori from Lori Bly DIY, and she does some amazing farmhouse DIYs using Dollar Tree items. And if you love gnomes as much as I do, she is a gnome queen, let me tell you. And who could forget my sweet friend Yelena from The Blondie Next Door. We did a collab not too long ago, and I just love her spirit and her kind heart. I also love the soft color palettes she uses in her rustic home decor projects. And of course she does everything on a teeny tiny budget. And then finally, we have my sweet friend, Lisa Burningham. And not only is she beautiful on the outside, she is even more beautiful on the inside. She always makes the most elegant, high-end looking projects and her style is just impeccable. So I will have this thrift store makeover playlist linked below. So be sure to check out all five videos as soon as you're done here. And if you're joining from another channel, welcome. And I hope you like what you see here today. Also, a big thank you to Liana for inviting me to be a part of this group. For our next project, we're going to be working with this little globe and I just am taking it apart and I'm going to paint the globe. It's a little bit roughed up and kind of ripped in some places, but I think it's going to be covered up by the white chalk paint. So I just took a dowel and I put some hot glue down so that it would stay in place and I could paint it a little easier. And so I gave this a total of three coats just to make sure nothing was peeking through. And then using my Silhouette Cameo 3, I'm gonna cut out a decal and apply it to the front of my globe. So 
So now that my paint is completely dry, I'm gonna take the world into my hands and put it back into place. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Goals, people. <laughs> So I'm just gonna cut my decal apart so that I can place it one by one because this is a rounded surface. So I wanna make sure that I don't have any creases or mess ups. So I'm just placing it in the right position where you can see most of the words if you're looking straight on. And I'm using Jeremiah 29:11 that says, for I know the plans I have for you. And then it goes on to say, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future. But I couldn't fit that all onto my world. <laughs> So here's the before picture and it started out pretty as is but it just didn't match my room very well and was a little beat up and here it is all finished and I love this so much and I didn't do anything with the base because I really liked the wood and the pretty white marble but this just goes to show you when your world is a little battered and bruised just add some Jesus because he makes all things new. <laughs> For our next makeover, I'm using this Ivy Topiary, and I used the original base in another video back in the fall. So I'm gonna replace it with a plastic ice bucket from the Dollar Tree. And I see these topiaries pretty often at the Goodwill and on Facebook Marketplace and maybe at yard sales because they were so popular back in the day. And I think they've kind of made a comeback in home decorating. But what I didn't realize until I almost threw this one away was that the form underneath has a nice thick metal spiral. So I'm gonna cut away all that ivy and pull off the big chunk of floral foam at the bottom and reuse it inside of our ice bucket. And I was a little scared to pull out the insides in case there were some squatters in there. <laughs> and I ended up putting some gloves on just to be sure. And it was super dusty and dirty. But once that spiral started showing up, I was so happy that I saved it. And you know my saying, it's not hoarding if you use it. <laughs> So before I painted my ice bucket, I took some sandpaper and got rid of some of that shininess so that my chalk paint would attach to it. Originally, I started painting it with my Waverly chalk paint in plaster, but later on I'm gonna change that to the white just because it didn't look white. It didn't look white, <laughs> so it was wrong. <laughs> And then I'm going to take that same white chalk paint and start kind of just brushing on a little bit to my spiral. And I want a lot of that metal to kind of show through so that it looks aged and distressed. So to decorate my bucket, I'm gonna take one of these die cut butterflies and there's 33 in a pack and these are from Dollar Tree. And I just found the right size one that I wanted and then there's a little bit of gold on there. So I took my Cricut spatula and just scraped most of that off. And then I'm gonna take my Mod Podge and brush that onto the back of my butterfly and then attach it to my bucket. And this was the perfect material to use the Mod Podge on because you don't have any wrinkles because it's a thicker material. It's kind of like cardstock. 
So I just placed that onto the front of my bucket and then took another layer and added it on top. And this is the matte Mod Podge and they also carry this at Dollar Tree in the teeny tiny bottles, but hey, it's a dollar. <laughs> So now I'm going to distress my bucket by using my black paint pen and just going along the lines of the top and the bottom and there's a little ridge there so I just went along that and the handles and I'm getting pretty good at this and since I'm a little bit low on my black chalk paint this was the perfect project to do and I got a little more practice. So now I'm going to take my floral foam and I cut it down to the size of my bucket and then I'm going to use some green moss also from Dollar Tree. Can you guys hear me scratching my nose? My nose was itching. <laughs> anyway, it was a little top heavy so I had to add some marbles into the bucket so that it would be a little heavier and wouldn't topple over. And then I'll place my moss on top of that and then poke my spiral down into my ice bucket. And it had these little pins inside of the floral foam that attached the spiral to that. So I just went ahead and used those and poked it in there and then hammered it down so that it was nice and secure. And then I took this really pretty bouquet from Walmart and just cut all of those stems apart and then I'm just going to start placing them into my floral foam. And I wanted this to be kind of over toward the right and just let most of that spiral show through. So I didn't want it to just be one full bouquet at the bottom. I wanted it dispersed up toward the side over to the right. Now I'm going to add some greenery that I found for a dollar at Dollar General and this resembles the Dusty Miller that Walmart carries but it's a lot more expensive. Well not a lot more expensive but it's a couple bucks more expensive but they're really pretty and they have that same texture of the lamb's ear but it's got a little bit of a rougher edge so they're super pretty and I just poke those in and I'm going up and inside of that spiral. And then I'm going to add some ranunculus and I had to look up how to say that. <laughs> but these are from Walmart and they're $3.47 for that big bundle. And altogether I ended up spending about $8 on all of the greenery and flowery goodness. So these are also from Dollar General and I don't know what they're called and they're not marked with a word or a type of flower that they are. But they look kind of like soft little pine cones of some sort. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just going to poke that up in through there and then I'm going to take my black chalk paint and just straight from the lid, I'm going to take my paintbrush and dip it in there and then wipe most of it off onto a paper towel and then just dry brush that over my entire bucket just to give it some more pretty distressing. And here it is all finished and oh, I just think this is so pretty and pink. I think this would work inside or outside on your porch. You could even make this as a Mother's Day arrangement. But I love it and I hope you guys like it too. For this thrift makeover, I'm going to be using this platter and this is, I think, sterling silver. I'm not really sure. So a lot of you are probably going to want to cover your eyes. After I clean this up, I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to spray paint it. <laughs> so I'm turning it upside down first and getting the bottom spray painted and I'm using my Krylon matte white spray paint and I'm going to give this a couple of coats on the bowl part and on the stand. 
So now while those are drying, I'm gonna use this styrofoam bunny, a couple of carrots, and this pet bandana in this pretty black and white buffalo check pattern. And I'm just gonna first iron my bandana with this mini iron that I found at Walmart. And I think it's so cute and it gets super hot just like a regular iron. So now I'm gonna take my carrots and just pull out that paper greenery that was in the top because we're gonna be replacing that. And then I'm gonna unwind the string that's wrapping them so that I'm just getting down to the bare styrofoam. And there's a little bit of adhesive left on the carrots, so it kind of stuck to the fabric and that made it a little bit easier to work with. But all I did was fold it over some of that fabric around the tip and then wrapped it around to get the size that I wanted. And then I'll cut that down and then I want that seam at the end of the bandana to be the seam at the back of our carrot so it has a nice clean finish. So I just unwrapped it and then made sure that that was on top and then I'm going to hot glue that down to close it up. So now I'm going to take some scrap boxwood greenery from Walmart and stick those into the top of the carrots and then I'm going to take some jute twine and wrap that around to attach everything together and give it some more cuteness. And then I had some scrap gingham fabric that I'm going to use on the other carrot. So now I'm going to take my big styrofoam bunny and I was so excited to find this at the Dollar Tree but to give him a little bit more texture I'm going to use this mastic and I just pushed it out of the tube and then rubbed it all over him so that it looks like concrete or stone and you definitely want to wear gloves for this but it was really fun to do this and then to smooth him out a little bit I just used a craft stick for some of the more pointy areas. And then I took my white chalk paint and I'm going to make him pure white. And then I took some celery chalk paint and just dry brushed a little bit in all of the little crevices so that it gave it kind of a really pretty patina look. So now I'm going to take some black and white cotton twine also from Dollar Tree and I'm going to tie a sweet little bow around his neck and add some scrap greenery and a tiny little flower to the middle of my bow. So then I was going to take three of these eggs from the Dollar Tree and paint them with my white chalk paint, but then I remembered that I already had some that were already white, so I'm going to use those instead and save myself a step. So now I'm going to take my black paint pen, and I get these from Walmart. So on one of my eggs, I'm going to write he, and then on the other one, I'm going to write is, and then on the third one, I'm going to write risen. 
And even though Easter is already over, the actual Easter season doesn't completely conclude until Pentecost, which is 50 days after we find the tomb was empty. So now that my bowl is dry, I'm just going to distress it by using my black chalk paint and I'll just put it onto my paintbrush and then rub it along the sides and give it a nice distressing. So to lift my bunny so he's a little bit taller in the back, I'm going to be using a Dollar Tree glass votive candle holder and placing it upside down in my bowl. And then I'll add some Spanish moss to cover the bottom of my bowl and I'll put him right on top. Then I placed my carrots and my eggs and this piece is done. And here's another look at where we started and here's where we ended up. And I love this arrangement so much. And even though I found out this was a William Rogers 935 and is worth about $25 without the stand, we paid $2.99 and added about three or $4 to it. And I think it is now priceless. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed these projects and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, like, and maybe even share this video. Don't forget to see what my sweet friends came up with by watching the playlist. I hope everyone has a blessed Easter season, a blessed day, and remember to always be the light. Bye!